All right, guys, welcome to part two of your PowerPoint certification practice project. <clears throat> and in this uh, presentation, we're actually um, going to navigate to the dinosaurs project. All right, so if you haven't already, um, go ahead and open this thing up. If you have it downloaded already, just go ahead and click on your download because uh, you don't want to work on it in Office 365. All right, so I'm going to say file and I'm going to say download as. Download a copy. We're almost done here. And we're going to go ahead and open this thing up. And uh, we're going to start off here with number 11 on your question sheet. And um, number 11, once this thing does open, says change the size of the presentation to 8 inches wide and 11 inches high. Ensure that the contents fit. Come on. All right, so <clears throat> this is actually one of those things that's new in Office 2019. If you guys click on these little dinosaurs here, you'll see that these are actually 3D models, all right? And um, some of the things that were that I saw on the test that you have to do with 3D models is just basically like changing the view of them or inserting a 3D model. There's not much to 3D models. They work almost exactly like images, all right? Um, so just to kind of give you a little heads up, that's one of the new things that you're going to see. Uh, so it says, uh, number 11 says change the size of the presentation to 8 inches. All right, so <clears throat> 8 inches wide and 11 inches high. Hi. So we're going to go to the design tab and we're going to go over here to slide size and we're going to go to custom slide size. All right, it says it wants it 8 inches wide and 11 inches high. So we're going to just type in 8 here and 11 inches high and we're gonna say okay it's gonna uh, give us a pop-up window and we're gonna click on ensure fit all right I know that looks terrible but we're gonna leave it like that create a custom slideshow named important findings that includes slides three through five only all right so slideshow tab and we're gonna go uh, set up no we're not we're gonna say custom slideshow custom shows we're going to click on the new button. There's no shows right now, so we're going to create one. We're going to call this show Important Findings. And it's not capitalized in the question, so I'm not going to capitalize it here. I'm going to go ahead and put a check in 3, 4, and 5. And then I'm going to press Add. All right? And then I'm just going to click OK and then Close. That's it. Um, number 13 says embed fonts for only the characters used in this presentation and then save the presentation all right so uh, we're going to go to the file tab this is a file tab options thing we're going to go down here all the way down here to options and under options we're going to go to the save group and right here you're going to see embed fonts in the file uh, embed fonts for only characters used in this presentation all right, so embed fonts for only characters used in this presentation. So by default, this is already, this is checked. All right, and we're going to say OK. Um, number 14 says on slide 3, configure the audio clip to fade in for two seconds. So before I even finish reading the question, let me just find the audio clip on slide 3. There, it's right here. All right, configure... Uh, the audio clip to fade in for two seconds when the user clicks the icon and then continues to play when the presenter advances to the next slide. Configure the settings so that the audio clip plays only one time but continues across multiple slides. So we're going to click on the audio icon. Under audio tools playback tab, all right, we're going to make sure that this says on click, which it should, all right, we're going to say play across slides, which is right here, and we're going to uncheck loop until stopped because it only wants it to play one time all right um i think that's it right oh fade in for two seconds i forgot fade in right there when the user clicks okay and that's not in the steps here so make sure in number 14 that you guys pencil in there that you do have to say fade in 
I didn't put that in here. I just must have skipped it. And that's it for number 14. All right. Um, number 15 says on slide 5, uh, apply the rounded diagonal corner white style to the pastel's smooth effect to the image. All right. So, hey, there's no image here on slide 5. Yeah, to the smooth effect to the image. Um, all right. Well, let's insert an image. My bad. I must have just not not thought about it. Let's just put in an online picture and uh, this it's a dinosaur PowerPoint so let's just search for random dinosaurs. Yeah, sure, sure, any one of these. Doesn't matter. I don't care which one you pick. They're all gonna use the same picture tools. Let's use this one. <clears throat> all right. Okay, never mind. Try a different one. Here, let's just try this with this cute little thing right here. There we go. All right. So here's our image. Let's go ahead and click off of it. Delete this. Gross. All right. So here's our image. And when you click on an image, all right, any image in any PowerPoint, any Microsoft program, basically, you're going to get picture tools and you're going to get a format tab up here. And pretty much everything you have to do to this image is going to be here. All right. So it says apply the rounded diagonal corner white picture style. All right. Picture styles are right here and they are kind of a pain. There's no names to them. You have to just hover over them until you find one that says rounded diagonal corner white style. So it's going to be one with a white outline and it's going to be rounded. like one of these, soft edge rectangle, rounded diagonal corner, white, that's it, boom. And then this pastels smooth effect is an artistic effect. You're going to see in here there's one called pastels smooth, or it just might be called pastels, I don't remember. So hover over these things and on a time test, this can give you a little bit of a heart attack. Film grain, mosaic, glass, plastic, pastel smooth. All right. It's an artistic effect. All right. So again, yeah, if you don't have a picture on slide five, go ahead and stick one in there and then just practice that question with it. On slide six, Arrange the circle so that they overlap in the following order from front to back. Conclusion 2, Conclusion 1, and Conclusion 3. So right now, let's see, how are these things overlapping? So Conclusion 1 is in the back, Conclusion 2 is on top of that, Conclusion 3 is on top of that. All right. So what I do here is I go to the Format tab, and I go to the Selection pane, and it says from front to back it wants conclusion two so conclusion two should be the one on top of everything from front to back then conclusion one <clears throat> and then conclusion three all right and again you can click on these things conclusion two should be over everything all right conclusion uh one should be over conclusion three, but under conclusion two. I know it's a tricky question, but this is the best way to do it. All right. <clears throat> On slide four, reverse the direction of the smart art. That's easy. So here's our smart art. We're just going to click on the smart art under smart art tools. I think it's under design. Yeah. We're going to say right to left. Boom. Just like that. All right. And uh, that's everything in this little question, in this little segment. So again, I'm going to stop part two and uh, pick it up with part three with the Coffee House Project.